First Corinthians 9 18. See the way Paul puts it. I'm talking Bible here. He said, What is my reward then? Verily, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not the power in the gospel. Every time you tie money to kingdom service, Paul said you have abused the power. No matter the flimsy excuse you give, that's not kingdom. This is what people endanger their lives for. We are asking for money to do it. In Acts of the Apostles 15, 25, 26, the Bible says, Paul and Barnabas, men that hazarded their lives for the gospel. I teach the gospel, you sing the gospel. All of us are ministers of the gospel. If you go and you are honored, thank God for it. If you are not honored, wait until God increase honor in your life. I know there are wolves in sheep clothing. I've been duped many times. I've been invited to preach. Traveled for days. When you are done preaching, they say, man of God will get back to you. God bless you, I leave. After one month, they are still getting back to you. Do the next business and continue. Can they pay you for preaching? If they can pay you for singing, you are hireling. And when you talk, a corrupt and evil generation, people try to bring justification. Which error? Go and read about those who sang the hymns that we are singing. That's why our song can't last for 10 years. Because they are sponsored by money. The inspiration came from Mammon. Go and look. There are hymns we are singing today that were sung 50 years ago. They are still fresh. Fresh. They came from the oven of the spirit. Today it's all about money, money, money. Doing all kinds of packaging. Building false momentum around ourselves. So that people can give money. It's a shame. When you talk, they say you are collecting tithe and offering. Ah, you, you just know their minds are corrupt. Go and ask those who are pastors. You know people think the administration of the offering is for the man of God. That's what they think. They think tithe is for man of God. Any man of God who touches offering or tithe is a thief. Because the Bible prescribed the administration of these things. It's for missions. It's for the care of the poor, the orphans, and the widows. It's not for the man of God. And then when there are Levites who don't have any work, it can be used for their welfare. I'm a traveling minister and I'm a, an apostle over this house. My traveling ministry is separate from what I do here. So the tithe and offering has nothing to do with my traveling ministry. I've been preaching from Sunday back to back to now. I preach on Sunday evening. Monday, Tuesday, I preach in Takoradi. On Wednesday, I came back to preach at the National Conference of Lawyers. On, on Thursday, Friday, I was in Jalingo preaching. I just came in from Lagos. I preached Saturday and Sunday morning. I'm preaching Sunday evening. Ask the person who traveled with me. Most of those meetings are rejected on Oridium. They gave me, I said no. When I saw the situation around, I said, we are all in the same kingdom. I shall show into what you are doing here. And then you find people, no, 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 don't clap, don't clap. I'm not saying this to let you know as though I've perfected. I'm just telling you kingdom mindset. And then somebody comes, he thinks, why do you think we are not powerful in our generation? Influence is lacking. Go and check the days of our fathers. A man can talk and kings can change laws. Today, whole churches gather and do vigil, nothing. Because God can entrust us with power. The fear of God is not there. We are not servants of God. We are servants of mammon. You want to do the will of God? You must become a servant of Christ. And when you are a servant of Christ, no man can pay you. Your focus is at the end of time. You want to hear one thing. Well done. Thou faithful servant. That's all you are looking for. That's your reward for serving. And you know most of these people are not trained and that's why i told you about altar court ministers all the people who do those things go and check them out it's jungle 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 they are singing everywhere for other christians who don't know god and god can keep them because i mean in every family there are more children than adults <laughs> it's a body my brother it's a body but see we have a war to take so we need true servants of God to emerge. Our wars need to carry power again. The church of God 
is being attacked in different nations and we don't have the authority to challenge darkness. Servants. Say Paul and Barnabas. Men that hazarded their lives for the kingdom. They hazarded their lives. You know most of us, we, 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 we don't even do kingdom. There are nations I've traveled to. Nigeria with our, our poor currency. You will still convert your money to dollars to take there because they need help. When I was going to Pakistan, all our savings, we, taught, we changed it to dollars. And I went, I gave the man of God. This is the little we can bring. And they need help, you will see it. Is it somebody who is charging for money that God can send to such places? And when I came, I knew what I brought was not enough. I wish I had more. Because you will see the needs of the gospel. Servants of God. You want to do the will of God, you must become a servant of God. This generation that is after quick thing, we don't know God's will. I'm telling you, we don't. And if you truly have a walk, an intimate walk with the Holy Ghost, these are some of the things he will teach you. When he taught me, it was like sweating blood. I'm telling you, if I tell you some stories, you will laugh. It's like sweating. And he's still doing it today. Because God will be checking your heart. You can't serve two masters. You either serve God or mammon. So he will be checking. The moment your heart begins to tilt towards money, he will bring another law. I remembered when I traveled to, to, to Italy. I went to Lagos twice to do Schengen visa. I spent almost 600,000. I can't remember the exact figure now. For flight and visa and everything. After visa was done, I had to travel to Lagos, to travel to Amsterdam, to travel to Milan, to drive four hours to Torino. I preached there three days. Returned to Milan, preached, traveled overnight back to Nigeria. Routed Holland and from, from Milan to Holland to Lagos back to Abuja. The man brought euros for me. The moment I was waiting and he was coming from, from the, the, the lift, I was seeing, my, my eyes were open, waiting for lifts to open, to collect, because they are needs. The Holy Ghost told me, don't touch that money. Don't touch that money. I said, from, 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 from Milan to Holland, two hours flight, it was like they shot something into my heart. I had to start praying, Lord, help me, help me. <laughs> I'm about to have heart failure here. But before you train me, I beg, heal my heart, heal me first. Heal me. What is going on here? Help me cry. Hey, I was literally feeling heartache because my brain had converted euros to naira. And seen the size of the envelope. Oh, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me, Father. Before everyone, you don't know what we are talking about here. You don't have an eye. You know, when you mature in this thing, it becomes harder. There was a time when I preached, they give me 5,000. When you are now preaching two nights and they give you $20,000, if God said, don't touch, you will know what I'm saying. Jesus, have mercy, have mercy. Do you know what it means? It's the will of the Father so that at the end of your work on earth, you won't say, we cast out devils in your name and he will say, away from me, workers of iniquity. We have servants of mammon. That's why you are listening to the message of people you are fornicating when you sleep. They are not kingdom agents. You are listening to somebody's music. You enter masturbation. How come? He's supposed to bring the government. But he's piping another frequency. Every day you keep hearing. I was listening to the message. I dozed off and I was, I, I was in, in, in immorality. Because that's the spirit powering that, that altar. You want the will of God? You must be a servant of God. Maximizing your destiny. A call to fulfill God's purpose. Beloved. Today we gather as young adults who are not only full of potential but also anointed and appointed for a divine purpose. The world is filled with distractions, challenges, and uncertainties. But the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119, 105. Our focus today is on maximizing the destiny that God has entrusted to each of us. We are going to explore how we can live out our purpose and fulfill our divine calling. 
Number 1. Understanding Destiny in God's Kingdom Before we can maximize our destiny, we must first understand what it means in the context of God's kingdom. Destiny is not just about personal success or achieving worldly goals. It's about aligning our lives with God's will and purpose. Jeremiah 29.11 reminds us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture highlights that our destiny is God-ordained. It's not something we create, but something we discover as we walk closely with Him. Number 2. Embracing Your Identity in Christ To maximize your destiny, you must embrace your identity in Christ. The world will try to define you by your past, your failures, or even by the standards of success it upholds. But in Christ, you are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 your identity is not based on what you do, but on who you are in Christ. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This means that God has already prepared a path for you to walk in, one that is filled with purpose and meaning. Number 3. Seeking God's Will Through Prayer and the Word Maximizing your destiny requires a deep and consistent relationship with God. Proverbs 3 5 Tark 6 advises us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Prayer is the vehicle through which we communicate with God, and the Bible is the roadmap for our journey. When you spend time in prayer and in the Word, you align your heart with God's will and gain the wisdom needed to make decisions that are in line with your divine purpose. Number 4. Overcoming Obstacles with Faith and Perseverance Every destiny comes with its challenges, but with faith and perseverance, you can overcome them. James 1 2, 4 encourages us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The obstacles you face are not meant to break you but to build you. They are tools in God's hands to mold your character and strengthen your resolve. Number 5. Surrounding Yourself with Godly Counsel one of the keys to maximizing your destiny is to surround yourself with people who will encourage, challenge, and support you in your walk with Christ. Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. The company you keep can either propel you toward your destiny or pull you away from it. Seek out mentors, friends, and leaders who will speak life into you and guide you according to the Word of God. Number 6. Serving Others as an Expression of God's Love Our destiny is never solely about ourselves. It's about impacting others for the kingdom of God. Jesus himself said in Matthew 20, 28, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. One of the greatest ways to maximize your destiny is to serve others. When you use your gifts, talents, and resources to bless others, you reflect the love of Christ and fulfill the purpose for which you were created. Number 7. Staying focused on the eternal perspective. As young adults, it's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of temporal success, career achievements, financial stability, or personal accomplishments. However, maximizing your destiny means keeping your eyes on eternity. Colossians 3 verse 2 instructs us, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When you live with an eternal perspective, you make decisions that have lasting value. You invest in relationships, character, and the advancement of God's kingdom rather than in things that will eventually fade away. Number 8. Walking in Obedience and Faithfulness Finally, to maximize your destiny, you must walk in obedience and faithfulness to God's calling. Luke 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. God looks at our faithfulness in the small things before He entrusts us with greater responsibilities. Obedience is not always easy, but it is necessary. When God calls you to step out in faith, do so knowing that He will equip you for the task and reward your obedience. 
Conclusion Beloved, the time to maximize your destiny is now. God has placed you in this generation for a reason. You are here to make a difference, to shine His light in a world that desperately needs it. Don't settle for anything less than God's best for your life. Remember that your destiny is not about achieving worldly success, but about fulfilling God's purpose for your life. As you leave today, let the words of Paul in Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14 resonate in your heart. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Press on, beloved. Maximize your destiny and let your life be a testament to the power and glory of God. Amen. Please don't hesitate to like and share our contents. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms at Believers Global TV. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.